wild pretty quick. I think that's a fair amount of review of a bunch of stuff going on here today, Mikey. Let's quickly dip into a nice segment uh, today to talking about how to defend a bad futures trade. Um, this is one that uh, I think a lot of people ask for a lot of the time because futures tend to be a shorter term trade unless you're using them for a cost effective investment, which they're great for. You know, the idea of, oh, I can get long $5,000 worth of stocks and only put up 10% in futures relative to 5,000 in SPY shares and put up 50 or 100%. Great mm -hmm. use case there. But a lot of times, Mikey, it's short term trades with futures. And since there isn't that premium, like there is an options where, oh, I, I sold a call into this up move in Tesla, and I can just roll it out, roll it out, roll it out and get, you know, $100, $200, $100 every time I roll it out, Mikey. And then Tesla, like we're seeing this week falls and I buy it back. And that's a pretty easy defense. And mm -hmm. futures, Mikey, you have pure static exposure and you don't have that premium to roll out and I get, you know, I, I'm, I'm further uh, increasing, uh, uh, benefiting my, my cost basis there. And so I have to make some decisions uh, a lot of times. And I'm sure you've seen this as you've uh, gone from starting out in equities and then adding options and then adding futures similar in the fact that they're both derivatives, they both offer really unique opportunities, but you have to defend them a little differently, right? Yeah, absolutely. And the way I trade options is pretty different from the way I trade futures in the sense that if you're selling options, you're hoping to benefit from contractions and volatility, and you're kind of riding that theta decay over time. I mean, generally, unless you're intending to scalp with options, your holding period is going to be a few days, right? With futures, it's very different game for me. I'm, I'm trading futures because of the capital efficiency, the low margins, because of the direct exposure that you get with futures, no drag necessarily, uh, and because of the no pattern day trading rule. And all of those factors result in trades that are pretty short term in nature. They could be uh, in and out within one day or just holding for a few days if I'm comfortable with the daily moves and the overnight risk in the market I'm trading. And this week, a lot of great examples uh, of exactly what Mikey's talking about, like really short term trades that I, I put on, especially before, during and after the F1C of this week, Mikey, so many different trades that within like 10 minutes, I was like, all right, this is a profit I'm taking or, oh, OK, this is a loss that I'm mm -hmm. taking here. And uh, of course, we trade in a way we trade in a high probability way. Uh, here on the network, that at the end of a given week, month, or year, you're hopefully taking more profitable trades than losing ones. But with that being said, you are taking losing trades in these futures markets. The big piece is making sure that those losses are around the same as those profits that you're taking. So on Wednesday, for example, the FOMC occurs, Mikey, I've got a bunch of stuff going on in the 30 minutes or an hour following that FOMC event, um, I think I'm short stocks, I'm long yields, I'm short two-year yields, I'm, I'm in US dollars, I'm, I'm in crude oil, these different things. And it was one of those days where I had a, you know, a losing trading day, which is going to happen. But I had, you know, great short, short stock trades that I took for profits. Some of these, uh, you know, some of the, the good trades to counteract ones like these, where I got short S2Y, it was up around its standard deviation where we like to get in and, uh, and, and get short a market on a day trade, got all the way up to 1090, let's call it. And I said to myself, all right, I'm taking this for a $30 profit or a $30 loss. And I should have nine times out of 10, I buy that market back at that $30 loss. And that is... To me, the defensive mechanic for if this is a day trade and you have no intention of drawing it out over the next several days or weeks, then that is your defensive mechanic is managing at that mechanical point that you set for all of your trades in a given market. Here we're in S2Y. For me, it's about 30 bucks in that market. That's a, a realistic expectation. If we're in crude oil, it's closer to you know 80 or 100 bucks, just given how much that market moves. But Mikey, what I did and what you can't do and what I usually don't do is I actually doubled up on this market here. I mean, you can 
you can do it if you really feel conviction and the market is small enough. And I told myself, this is a small enough market. I'm used to risking, like I say, $100 trading crude oil. I can work my way up to, you know, 50, 60, $100 of risk in this market. But doubling up like I did on Wednesday, it, it quickly triples your losses here and, and really messes up. I mean, this is something that messes up my week. Uh, and, and thankfully, I don't do this so often, so it doesn't mess up my month or, or my uh, year here. But you see, you end up, you start out with a trade, Mikey, I'm looking for 30 bucks. I end up taking a $90 loss because the market just continued into one of those rare outlier modes. Yeah, that's tough. I mean, you, you bend the rules a little bit for a binary announcement, which typically results in really nice two-sided scalping action. Here, we just continue to kind of run higher. Um, I love that you set the mechanic at the start of the trade. You knew that your two years are going to move about $30 and you kind of tried to break it back, but you've acknowledged, you know, this was a little bit uh, of a slip up, right? It's different from your normal trading behavior. Did you bounce back from this in any way? I mean, what, what made you realize, okay, I'm out for the $90 now. I mean, did you have that limit when you added the second contract or? Well, yeah, that, that's just like, I, I, I should have on the first turn, obviously been strict with myself, but especially after doubling up like this, it, you have to be especially strict where it's like, all right, now I'm getting two or three or four units on, like, I can't let this thing go. Mm -hmm. And so market moved through me and I called it uh, a day on that and just uh, managed both of them there. Now there is an alternative to this stuff, especially as small exchange adds options. You can leave the door open for further trade defense. Now, this is though a, a thin line to walk here. I, and I would try to push people to make sure when you're entering in trades, kind of tell yourself, this is one I could see myself having for a little bit longer. And thus I will commit the trade defense we're about to cover here to conclude uh, the show. But if you are in the second piece of, of this potential kind of decision tree here, where it's like, this is a day trade, I don't have long-term conviction in this market, then take it off like I should have in this example uh, mm -hmm. here. But here in metals, you know, they moved down to the lows on Wednesday, uh, big move lower, and they moved down to historical lows. And this is one where I don't mind buying the market there and then saying to myself, you know, I, sh I should be taking this off for a loss here, but I can defend it by selling an option uh, to hedge the losing position. And then uh, from there, roll that option out over time until the market comes back into my profit zone. That's also a way to defend uh, your futures trades. I love this. Yeah, you're kind of reducing your cost basis, giving yourself a little more wiggle room uh, as opposed to just being directionally exposed to the 50 50 um, movement in, in futures. You're really like adding a little bit of probabilistic edge by reducing that cost basis.